I have been working on a number of projects recently, including, but not limited to, dice. Also, check out my Christmas present that my uh, godson made me. How cool is that, right? Right? That's cool. We're gonna hang this up somewhere. I just gotta find a place somewhere over there to make room. But I have actually been taking a good amount of time to learn how to make dice. I'm talking like tabletop, RPG, D&D &D dice. I'm also watching GDQ in the background. Let's go, uh, Faroob. Yeah, I have been taking some time to learn how to make tabletop dice. And they're coming out okay. Uh, the molds I made weren't perfect. There's some imperfections on some of these, like, kind of hard to see, but you can see that some, some parts of the 10 are kind of scuffed. Uh, I think the six on this is just absolutely borked. But what I figured I could do is I could take some time, show you how I made the molds, go through, show you how I poured the resin, and make a whole set of dice from start to finish with you guys. So, so to give you an idea, we're going to be starting with our Elegoo Mars 3D resin printer here. We're going to print the dice, then using some Zona sanding paper, we're gonna sand the dice down. There's gonna be about a two week gap in the video so that the dice can degas, and so I can make the molds properly without the silicone molds basically not setting. So, here's hoping I remember in two weeks to finish the video. And then we're gonna go ahead and use some of this dang here Dragon Skin 20 to make us some silicone molds that look kind of like this. They're individually sized molds. Uh, some people on TikTok or YouTube like to make big slab molds where all seven dice are made on one of these. But the problem with that is if one of the dice molds in that slab goes bad, like if the pips rip out or something, you're kind of screwed. It's bad time. I make individual molds. That's just me. So <clears throat> I threw that one because that was a bad mold. That was from the very first set I ever tried. Actually, here's more of the very first set I ever tried. It's kind of scuffed. It's kind of not good. So, you know, and here are the newer kind of molds that I've been making a ton of sets from. So, and lastly, once the molds are set up and ready to go, we're going to use some Envirotex light hard resin Hard resin? This is hardener. We're gonna use the Envirotex light to make dice with. So, when using resin, it's important to have proper PPE. What does that mean? Personal protective equipment. In this case, it is this here uh, mask that is rated for fumes, and also these here gloves, which are rated for not getting resin all over my hands. Since I'm going to be using the 3D resin printer, I want to, well, move the 3D resin printer over... Does this sound weird? We're going to be moving the 3D resin printer. This sounds even worse. <laughs> and I guess before we try to use the resin printer, we should plug it in. Yeah, what do you think? I think that's the best call we've made all day. Having a resin printer is cool, but it's hard to use if you don't have resin. And this is the part where I say, hey, I'll be back, I gotta go get resin, but I actually have resin right here. This is Soraya Tech Simple Clear. It is specifically made for 3D resin printers, and I'm very much a noob with these. So if I say something that's wrong, oops, we're gonna lift off the top, and we're going to open up our resin and drop it in the tank. I'm gonna actually pour this back in and make sure that I don't completely mess it up. It's literally, it's on the label. It says shake well before using. What the heck am I doing? We're already off to a fantastic start. Watch Nerdy Husky ruin this 3D printer. I'm just making a big old mess. Like I was saying, shake it a little bit and then open up your resin. Drop it in. Oh yeah, baby. And now we cover, cover it up, turn it on. I can remove this now that, uh, we're done with the resin. In fact, I can take this off now. Was this the one? I think this is the one. I hope it's the one. It's really awkward. So I'll hit start. This is literally the worst part about the whole process. Waiting. I'm not a patient person, typically. Two hours and 46 minutes. So I'll see you guys back ar around then. Two hours and 46. Okay, so this is a bowl of isopropyl alcohol. 
In fact, I might even filter this out and get some new stuff, so give me one second. This is 91% isopropyl alcohol. I just filtered out the isopropyl that was in there before. And what I'm gonna do now, fill that up a little bit more. We are gonna take our scrapey boy and we are going to pop off the build plate. And there are our master dice so far. So now these guys are gonna take an isopropyl alcohol bath for a little bit, preferably not landing on each other. And while those guys are taking a little bath, we're gonna put this plate back on, add a little bit more of our Soraya tech, and we're gonna take some time for this to go one more round because I want two sets of masters right now. So there that goes, wipe off, wipe off, wipe off. Remember, if you sprinkle when you tinkle, please be neat and wipe the table. That's probably not how it goes, but that's what we're going with. One more time, one more time, one more time. And then the last thing we gotta do is take our masters that are in here, right there, give them a little bath, use a toothbrush specifically for resin, clean off the excess resin on here, and then just kind of let them dry off a little bit before we do the next thing. So I'll see you in the... It's gonna be a couple seconds for you, but it's gonna be three hours for me. Remember kids, brush twice a day. And floss. Or don't, I'm not your dad. Pull them out. Shake it off. Yep. Let them dry. If after they dry, there's still some glossy spots and it's not cloudy, that means there's more resin there. And they'll have to take another bath. Someone's calling me. time in the bath and they can hang out in there for a second because we have to clean up the actual printer clean and take care of your stuff the right way the first time, it'll last you forever, or at least until something happens to it. Oh no! So part of keeping these in good condition is recognizing that they're still very soft, and therefore knocking them over into things that are not soft, i.e. Uh, everything on my desk, is a problem. But luckily it looks like there was no damage, and even if there was a little bit of damage, we're gonna sand these things out anyway. We're gonna sand these little guys out and give them a nice little, as close to mirror polish as we can. Wipe, 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 lid, and done. Okay, so six and a half hours later almost, of labor-intensive work. I mean, really heavy-handed stuff. Not that I did anything, it was mostly the printer, but what we have going on now are two complete sets of masters. These are the dice that we are going to use the Dragon Fiend 20 and make our molds out of. Now, these dice ultimately will not be hard enough or at least will not survive long enough if we were to just make them this way and just throw them and start you know, playing D&D with them. It's just not gonna work. These dice are all delightfully cloudy, and these, they look like they might be crystal clear. That's because they are still drying from their resin and alcohol bath. So, the next step is going to be to use these Zona papers, and we get to go down and sand each side on each individual master six times. So. How many times is that? That's a lot of math. I'm not good at math. All right, so we're dealing with four plus six plus eight plus 10 plus 10 plus 12 plus 20. That is 70 sides times two sets of dice, 
140 sets, 140 sides, facets, if you will, uh, times six. We're going to be sanding 840 facets of these just to get them nice and ready for the molds. So let's do that. What do you got? Lots of things. Let me see. What's this paper? And it's just handing his entire uh, will over to me when he dies, so hopefully nothing happens to him. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh yeah! It's sanding time! But we're not gonna be using this sander. No, 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 no. This guy is a little too aggressive. I'm just drop that there. The sander that we are going to be using are our own hands combined with these Zona papers. These Zona papers, they're micro mesh polishing papers, and there's six different levels of them. I don't remember if I already said this at this point during the video, because remember how like a minute ago I said, I'll see you guys tomorrow and we're going to do some polishing and sanding. It's been like three days. I procrastinated. God damn it. But basically, some of the other things we need. We need this. If it wasn't reflective, it might look like I'm just holding up an empty rectangle, but this is in fact a pane of glass. Why do we need a pane of glass? We need a super smooth, super flat surface to adhere our polishing paper to, and to, you know? And what better substance than glass? Literally just pulled it out of a picture frame, taped up the edges so I don't hurt myself. Please be safe when you're doing this. If you're gonna do something like this, make sure you have all the proper protection equipment, personal protection equipment, PPE. Hmm. Anyway, enough talking about it, let's do it. I realized I just went through that whole what we're gonna do to polish, but I realized now that we didn't even talk about these little bits, the stands. What are we gonna do about those? Answer, put them in a bowl of hot water or warm water for a little bit to loosen up the plastic and cut them off. We're gonna do that before we polish. I'm getting ahead of myself, can you tell? Am I impatient? Maybe. I have ADHD, let's go. All right, here's our bowl of water. Now we just gotta heat it up a little bit. Perfect. But now in all seriousness, we need to find our little crafting snips little tiny snipping tools. You can get these at like Joann's or whatever. And we're just gonna go ahead and place all of these masters into the warm water so that we can loosen up the, uh, what are they called? Stilts, stands, supports. And now while we wait for those to warm up a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and crack into our can of unnamed energy drink. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's real nice. So the idea is you take the snips and you take your D20 and you want to clip the supports as close to the edge as possible without actually cutting the edge. So if I were to like snip, snip, and do that on all, for this D20 there's five supports, or five edges that have supports. The idea is we go in and you see it just fall off like that. Now, there's still gonna be some edges and whatnot, right? And we can go through and anything that's really protruding, like really bad, we can snip off. But we're about to sand these down anyway. So when we're done with it, these edges are all gonna be cleaned up anyway. So I'm gonna go through and do that with all the rest of these. So give me a moment. And done. That wasn't so bad, was it? Well, the next step is going to be to sand, right? Wrong. I forgot another step. You see this guy? Probably not. There we go. This is a UV tank. And in the UV tank is a little carousel for the dice to go on. Now what I need to do is harden these dice before I sand them such that I don't ruin the die. So we're gonna have these guys take a little, uh, little ride on the... Why is it moving? Did I leave a battery in here? There's no... What? Wait... Oh. Zoom! You see this moving, right? I'm very confused. It's turning. Th this is not. A, this is not a bit. 
This is not a gag. This thing's moving. It's spinning very clearly. But there's no battery. Uh, okay, let's get a battery so I can put my mind at ease. Watch, I put the battery in and then it stops moving. That was weird. Anyway, like I was saying before I was haunted and freaked out here, all these little dice, they're gonna get a chance on the merry-go-round here. And uh, yeah, because it's fun for them. So you might notice when you're using the UV tank that they turn slightly yellow. Let us compare if it'll focus. The one on my left, well, your left too, it looks like, is slightly yellowed, while the one on my right, our right really, is still crystal clear. This is fine. You don't want it to get too yellow, um, but this is, this is a lot harder than this is now. So we're gonna go ahead and give the dice the masters that didn't have a ride on the carousel, it's gonna be their turn now. And then we let these sit for a second, and then we can go through and start sanding all these some bitches down. For real this time. We are now done with the carousel. So, get rid of this. And we take the dice off of the carousel, the merry-go-round. And we're done with this too. And now for real, for real this time, at long last. Let's tape up the, the... And now for realsies, for Rizzle, actually, in reality, the time is now, time to use our Zona papers and sand up these song bitches. We take the desired grit of the Zona paper, put it on the middle of our glass sheet here, using some painter's tape, and there we go. Flat surface for us to take our dice, and on each individual side, go in 15 or so tiny circles. I know there's more body efficient ways to do this, like, I don't know, a uh, little mini pottery wheel that you tape this on, and you just sit there and do this with the die, you just sit there and hold it like that and let it go. I don't have one of those. There's also things like tumbler, rock tumbler things. Did I already mention this earlier? I'm too poor to remember. Anyway, so zona papers are wet or dry. So I'm gonna be doing it wet just to avoid getting a whole bunch of dust everywhere. So get the paper wet, take your dye, get that some bitch wet and begin. Bada bing, bada boom, there we go. We have the first D20 sanded. We are making a little progress. So I'm gonna go through the rest of these six dice on this one sheet, then I'm gonna switch it out for a new green sheet and do this next set. Uh, I don't know how long that took, but it feels like it took forever. Oh, that's this set done on the first paper. I still have to switch the paper out and do this whole set again. And it's been like 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead, like I said, you guys can come back a little later, it'll be a few seconds for you. It's gonna be several hours for me. We'll be back. Oh my god. Look at that. Came right off, it's like the tape didn't do anything. I started sanding these. And now I gotta wait about 12 more. Yep, that's right. Now that they're all completely sanded, we just gotta wait about 12 days for them to completely degas, so that way, when we use our Dragon Skin 20 mold, our Dragon Skin 20 silicone to create the molds, uh, it doesn't gum up and it actually comes out really nice. So at this point, we technically have two options. Option number one is you guys sit here with me on the couch and we wait for about two weeks. 
And option number two is I upload this video as a part one and you come back in a little bit for a part two and we complete the whole dice making process. Now, something to note, are my methods necessarily the correct methods? No, you should never put dice in your mouth for the point of a video. These aren't even the masters anyway, these are some failed masters that I made some time ago. But the important thing to take away from here is that this is a process that I started doing, and the whole thing's DIY anyway, so you can take a lot of artistic liberties along the way. Look up a bunch of other YouTubers or TikTokers that are making dice. Rybinator's huge on this platform. But with that said, now we wait. Should have brought something to do. It's gonna be a long two weeks. But all joking aside, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you're new around here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on TikTok, join the discords, links to all that down in the video description. And as always, stay awesome, don't do anything that I wouldn't do, and I will catch you in the next video. High five.